Good morning, Emmanuel. Our service will begin shortly. Uh, good morning, Emmanuel. Welcome to our online gathering for church this morning. I keep getting a little message popping up once in a while that says I'm unstable. So uh, if we glitch out here, just be patient and uh, I'll find one way or another to get back online. So I wanted to begin this morning um, just by taking a moment to name and condemn the act of terrorism against Muslim communities everywhere. While we're all still reeling from the discovery of indigenous children, which now the number uh, I believe is up to 392, we're hit with another wave of grief with uh, devastating results with the reality that Islamophobia uh, is now something we can no longer ignore. Our indigenous friends have been telling us for decades to listen. Now we must listen. Our Muslim community has been telling us that we need to listen when they speak of Islamophobia. And so now it is time to listen. As we move through our time of worship this morning, let us hold all of our families of all diversities in our hearts so that we may lift us all together up to God in prayer and then reaffirm our commitment to work for real systemic change everywhere. Well, friends, today we are taking a deep dive into the Jonah story. Uh, we're going to be using the story's imagery as a metaphor to illustrate how rough waters can actually produce a kind of hope that we can all hang on to. And I don't know if anybody of you saw this story, but I had to like really uh, have a chuckle last night because all week I've been, you know, steeped in the Jonah story, thinking about it, writing about it, um, trying to write really lift it out of itself and see it as the metaphor um, for uh, a number of different things. And then um, laying there in bed last night and I'm scrolling through my phone and don't I see in my news feed a dude uh, snorkeling um, actually he was a lobster fisherman anyways uh, scuba diving 
off the shores of Cape Cod. Doesn't he get sucked into the mouth of a whale? And then the whale spits him out. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, what's that saying? Um, oh yeah, there's no atheists uh, in the foxholes. Well, if you ever find yourself in the mouth of a whale, I don't think you'll find any atheists there either. Anyways, he's got a real whale of a tale to tell. So if there's anyone, <laughs> if there's anyone who is joining us for the first time or new to the Emmanuel or Waterloo Wayside communities, we offer a very special welcome. <laughs> oh God, I love it when I make myself laugh. I hope you guys are all laughing out there too. Anyway, we're so glad that you are here. We are an affirming congregation. We are not a religious people as much as we are a human people. We are a community of faith that includes people of no faith, people who doubt faith, and people who have been hurt by faith. We aspire to create a space that is safe and respectful, but also brave as we challenge one another to be the best that we can be. And we affirm all people for the natural gifts we all bring individually and collectively as part of our race, age, culture, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, background, and wide, wide range of abilities. And we actively work toward anti-racism by dismantling the systems and the stories that privilege one race over another. So thank you to all of you for being with us, for gathering today, and thank you because together we make this community an amazing place to be. I just have one announcement before we go into lighting our Christ candle. We're going to be doing um, celebrating communion together later in the service. So if you've not yet had a chance to do so, you might want to grab a piece of bread and maybe some wine, maybe a little juice or a cracker, coffee and a muffin. Anything uh, you would like, have that on the ready and we will um, celebrate communion uh, together a little later in the service. And so as we move into our time of worship, let us light our candles of Christ. If you have a candle handy, please uh, join us in lighting the candle. We light the fire because it reminds us that it is the spirit of love that reigns supreme in our lives. So let us light our candles together now. This light represents our commitment to love, our commitment to unity, and our commitment to live by these principles in our lives. Let us pray. To the awesome God of resurrected things, be with us this day as we celebrate the mystery of your love. Let the light of your love flood our lives and then extend outward from us to all those experiencing rough tides. And may our love be a comforting beacon and a sign of hope for all to see. Draw us forward and away from our limitations and into the immense world of your freedom. Give us the capacity to even for a moment taste the richness of your abundance as we feast on your love. And give us the peace to live with uncertainty and to live the questions. And help us to experience you in all the people of your creation and let the waters we endure raise us all to new heights. Amen. It was Jesus who said, peace I leave with you, a peace the world cannot give. Let us not see so much with our eyes, but with the rhythm of our hearts. Let us acknowledge the interconnectedness only our hearts can perceive and let the conflict we know today become the strength that we know tomorrow. May the peace of Christ be with you. 
And our opening hymn this morning comes to us from Voices United, number 625. And uh, we have Melissa Mogsoulis, who is leading us in song this morning. And so I will turn it now over to uh, Melissa and Nancy. to see if we have any kids online. There's little Erica. I heard you singing, Erica. You sound amazing. Um, and there's baby Jamie. So we have some kids coming online. We're going to spend some time together. And is Brendan there? I don't see Brendan. Is he just off to the side? And we got Megan. There's Brendan. Hi, Brendan. Good to see you. For some reason, my feedback's a little choppy. So um, uh, having a bit of trouble. There's Alex and uh, Megan. Nice to see you. Megan, I love seeing all of your delicious desserts on Facebook. I'm so tempted all the time. I can't wait till I get off this diet. Man, you're going to get inundated <laughs> with orders. <laughs> I had one of them last night. The macaroons were amazing. Oh, man, I'm super jealous. Um, all right. Well, thanks, kids. Thanks for um, coming to hang out with me for uh, a moment or two. Um, so, well, first of all, let me just ask you how you're doing. Brendan, how has your week been? How are you doing? Are you getting ready to be done school? Oh, maybe he doesn't want to unmute today. Maybe he doesn't want to unmute today. That's okay. Well, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be talking about uh, in church. Um, so we're talking about the Jonah story today, which is uh, one of those stories, like sometimes when we talk about stories in the Bible, it's stuff about really happened, you know, like Jesus, you know, he was a real dude. But um, uh, in the Jonah story, Jonah, this is a story that's like make-believe. So some stories are real and some stories are make-believe. This is one that has been written um, as make-believe. It's one that's written uh, for us to learn a lesson uh, all about. And so um, maybe you've heard the Jonah story. Has anybody heard the Jonah story before? Does Erica know the little Jonah story? 
Is that, is that, is this going to be a first for her? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Well, the Jonah story is all about this, uh, this guy who, um, he, he wants to run away from God. So God calls him and he says, Hey, Jonah, I need you to go over there and tell my people to start, you know, being nice to one another because they're not being nice, nice to one another. So I need you to go over there and tell them to start being, start being nice to one another. And Jonah's like, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want any part of that. And so he hops on a, on a boat and he wants to sail to the other side of the world. So he gets on this boat and he, and he sails all the way to the other side of the world because he figures if he was on the other side of the world, God couldn't find him. And, uh, but meanwhile, he's on this big boat and this huge storm comes. Uh, and everyone is on, on the boat is like, oh, who, who made God mad that we have this storm? And Jonah's like, well, it's me because I'm running from God. So they throw him overboard. <laughs> they throw him off the boat. And, uh, you know, he's out there in the middle of the ocean. And um, this whale comes along, swallows him up. And he sits inside this whale for like three days. And while he's in there, he has to think all about, you know, whether or not he's going to do this thing that God wants him to do. And, uh, and so he does, and he realizes that, you know what, maybe I shouldn't have ran away from God. And, you know, I tried to run away from God, but God found me anyways. So, uh, so maybe I ought to just do what God wants me to do. So then as soon as he decides this, the whale spits him out onto the beach and he goes and he tells the people, you know what, God says, you got to start being nice to each other. And you know what? They listen, they do. And that's how the story ends. They listen and they change their hearts and they, they love God and then they love each other. But the moral of the story, well, there's a lot of them, but the moral of the story, I think, is that no matter where you are, you can't really run from God, that God is always with us. And that God actually came to Jonah uh, in a lot of different ways. So not only was God in the storm, but God was in the sea. Um, God was in the message, but God is also the whale. God is also the whale um, because ultimately it formed this, this uh, vessel of safety that Jonah could ride in so he didn't drown. So Jonah didn't drown because he was in the whale. So God became the whale um, so that Jonah could uh, learn this lesson. So that's the Jonah story. We're going to be talking more about that. Did you guys get your coloring page that I sent you? Maybe you, you maybe you colored your little whale, but you can go back and look at your Emmanuel Weekly and you'll find a, a coloring page. And while you're coloring it this week, uh, you can uh, think about all the ways that um, Jonah encountered God in the world. Not so. Do you have any stories that you would like to share with me? No stories this week? Oh, well, you must be having a very lazy Sunday. That's fine. Oh, banana. I see you're eating a banana. Don't worry. It's a banana from NASA. It's not real. It's like made of a <laughs> weird rubbery. Isn't that amazing? And you can eat it. Oh, well, it's kind of like the Jonah story. It's not really real, but it teaches us something, right? That's awesome. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, Erica, thanks for uh, lending your voice to that beautiful harmony uh, with your folks there when you're singing. And uh, Alex, uh, thanks for coming on and so we can all see you growing big and strong. And, and Jamie and, and Brendan too, thanks for hanging out. Hopefully we'll see you all again at the end of the service. So our scripture reading today comes from the book of Jonah, uh, chapter two verses one through nine. Jonah prayed to God from the belly of the fish. And Jonah says, I called out to God in my distress and I was answered. From the belly of the underworld, I cried out for help. You have heard my voice. You had cast me into the depths, into the heart of the seas and the flood surrounds me. All your strong waves and your rushing water passed over me. So I said, I have been driven away from your sight. Will I ever look on your holy temple again? Waters have grasped me to the point of death. The deep surrounds me. 
seaweed is wrapped around my head at the base of the undersea mountains. I have sunk down to the underworld. Its bars held me with no end in sight, but you brought me out of the pit. When my endurance was weakening, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you, to your holy temple. Those deceived by worthless things lose their chance for mercy, but me, I will offer a sacrifice to you with a voice of thanks. That which I have promised, I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. And with that, we will raise our voices in song again. Um, the Moksulis family helping us sing along. This one is from More Voices, number 84. In you there is a refuge. So I'll turn it over to you. So Jonah, uh, chapter two, verse three, you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas and all your waves and your flood surrounded me. By way of chance, I wrote the following words sitting waterfront along the shore of Lake Ontario. As I watched the waves roll up and crash upon the shore, I thought about Jonah. I wondered how it must have felt to be cast overboard, to find oneself tossed about upon the rough waters of the deep. What was it like to be thrown overboard? Was Jonah flailing about desperately trying to keep his head above water or was he resigned? waiting helplessly for a tide to simply come and take him under. The role of water in creation, in faith and in life is an important one. Jonah was cast into water, Jesus rose up from the water and it is by way of water for which we become baptized. We become new creations in life and in faith. Life cannot begin, nor can it be sustained apart from water. Water then is the lifeblood of creation itself, for it was the only element present with God in the beginning. And it is the element that is present when Jesus rises up, causing it all 
to be born anew. Everything old and new comes by way of water. In many ways, this time of pandemic is our way of water. It's our rough sea. It's our shadow of the deep. In many ways, it's, it feels as though we've all been cast overboard. Are we not all in a strange and chaotic place that threatens to overwhelm us, toss us, misplace us, and take us under? I don't know about you, but it feels like it to me most days. Some days I find myself kicking and flailing and trying to keep my head above water and other days I'm just floating upon the surface, resigned to the next wave that will come and take me under. Interesting that God's whale serves as a vessel of safety during this threatening time in Jonah's life under the surface, insulated from the sea, Jonah rests contemplates and realigns his deepest connections while residing in this belly that God made. So where is our whale? Where is our belly of safety as we navigate these uncharted, uncharted waters of pandemic? Well, it's in the same place I think it's always been. It's in the place where love lives. Love is the insulation wrapped around us, holding the rough waters at bay. Jonah ran from God, boarded a ship to sail the other side of the earth to escape the reach of God, but in the end, he was unsuccessful because God cannot be outran. God cannot be escaped. Creation was born for the purpose of love, and so are we. The whale is God wrapping around Jonah. Jonah is engulfed in God while he resides in the underbelly of the world, while he endures his darkest hour, and I believe that God is wrapped around us too, now, waiting, creating becoming. Our world is different. Yes. And there is pain and there is hardship and there is death. In life, there is always pain and hardship and death. But a life of faith is knowing that love will always outrun us. Love will always engulf us and tend to us. Love will always create from us and for us a place to simply be loved. Love will outrun us. Love will be waiting for us when we show up. And when we're ready, well, God will spit us up back onto our beaches so that we can go and be the people that we are meant to be. We are a people who proclaim God's love even in the places we don't want to, even from the underbelly of the world, because when the seas are rough, we proclaim. When the seas are calm, we proclaim, because we know that we are always being made new, and the path to newness is never smooth, but rather a darkness made fruitful. God is always up to something new, and so let us wade a while in the safety of the spirit. Let us languish in love. When darkness comes, let us fight back with the beauty of love. Amen.
Let us pray. Creator God, as we look back on the years gone by, all the mountains standing in our mind, we could have folded and we could have turned around, but all the good stories have their ups and downs. So we find our way through. We have to find our way through. The fruitful darkness is all around us in bloom. The dark within our dark is where we find the light. And the fruit becomes the doorway, and now it's open wide. Merciful God, sometimes like Jonah, we stubbornly refuse your word when it comes to us. Instead of dropping our nets and following you, we run in the other direction. May we run, when we run away from the tasks that you have given us, life seems to go okay for a little while, then inevitably the fabric that is the life we weave apart from God begins to unravel just a bit on the edges at first and then before our eyes our life can often tear and unwind and be reduced to a disparate collection of strands of thread. When this happens we want to remember that we are not alone. You weave us back together strand by strand until we become more than we could have ever imagined. You are our creator, creating fruit from the darkness that we endure. Friends, let us take a moment to pause and hold 
uh, a moment of silence to pray our personal prayers that are on our own hearts in this moment. And as we take this moment of silence, let our hearts hold vigil over our Muslim and indigenous communities who are suffering, suffering so greatly at this time. Let's also think about our community member, Melissa Jacques, who finds herself in hospital once again um, and is recovering now from a broken leg. And so let us just hold all of that in prayer as we take a moment to pray our silent prayers. And friends, now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. For God is to all of us like our mother and our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we move into our time of offering, I wanted to share with you some great news. Our second pop-up vaccination clinic for our street-involved friends and the volunteers who support them will be happening this Wednesday on site at Emmanuel. This clinic will be getting our most vulnerable folks uh, and uh, the volunteers their second shots. So I wanted to say a very special thank you uh, to Emmanuel through Waterloo Wayside uh, and our mission and service committees who serve the wider community um, and uh, who love our wider community uh, with generosity and care. I also wanted to remind you that when you are considering your offerings and donations, keep in mind our children's coin collection which is being donated to Food for Kids. Food for Kids, uh, Waterloo Region provides packages of healthy food for kids ages one to 14 who are living with chronic hunger. Food for Kids fills a gap by delivering food to children on the days when they do not go to school, like on weekends and during school breaks. Emmanuel is the kind of community that steps into the gaps and becomes a bridge while also supporting others who do the same. And so, as we consider how the abundance that we have acquired might become gifts for others, let us listen to our offertory and consider all of the ways that we can still support our Emmanuel and Waterloo Wayside communities. And uh, as we are listening, the ways that you can give will come up on your screen for your consideration. So I'll turn it over to you, uh, Nancy and Melissa. Spirits 
will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease, soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Thanks so much for that uh, beautiful singing. I love to listen to Erica harmonizing in the background there. Friends, let us pray. For all the ways that we are givers and receivers, we give thanks. May the presence of the Holy One take what we offer and continue to create abundance in our lives. May the love that lives in the giving of ourselves be known to all who encounter us, and may these offerings become a beacon of hope for others. Amen. I hope that you have uh, had a chance to bring some bread and some juice or maybe a little wine uh, with you uh, to um, our gathering this morning. But even if you haven't, please know that you are a part of Christ's communion, whether you're able to have the physical elements present or not. Holy mystery, you are beyond complete knowledge and above perfect description. Creator, sustainer, source of life. You are creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and distant corners of the universe, and nothing exists that does not find its source in you. The presence of God covers the earth as the waters of the sea. The trees of the field clap their hand, and the birds of the air sing songs of praise. And if we should fail to express our worship, even the rocks and the stones would cry out. We rejoice with your people of every time and in every place, and it is through Jesus that we are joined together as a community of complicated and messy, yet hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and in our place and in this place. And so we lift up our hearts and we lift up our voices, and we offer thanksgiving and adoration to the creator of all. The United Church's A New Creed reminds us that we are called to live with respect in creation, not for creation as a separate entity, but in creation. That is all around us and within us. That is our origin story. We are a people who are, are formed of soil, and of water, and of one another. On the night before Jesus died, Jesus gathered in an upper room with his friends and his disciples in his community. And at that gathering, they shared a meal together. And during that meal, Jesus took the very simple element ordinary element of bread. He raised it. He broke it. He gave thanks. And he passed it to all of his friends and all of the individuals in his community. And he said, take all of you and eat, for this is a symbol of my body given for you and for all people for all time. Take and eat and do this often and when you do remember me and likewise 
after the meal was finished, Jesus took the cup. He raised it and he blessed it and he gave thanks and he passed it around to all of his friends and individuals in his community. And he said, take all of you and drink for this is a symbol of the new covenant, a covenant built upon the foundation of love. Take and drink, do this often. And when you do, remember me. Gracious God of compassion, you poured out your spirit upon our ancestors, and likewise, you pour out your spirit upon us now. So as we eat and as we drink, may we know your presence. As we eat and as we drink, may we be opened to new possibilities, and may we courageously answer the call to care for your creation and for each other in the way our indigenous neighbors have done for centuries and centuries. This table belongs not to any sect or institution. This table belongs to Jesus and all, no matter what, are welcome. So let us now share together in the mystery of our faith. Take into your hands your bread, for this is the bread of life and it shall sustain our strength. Take and eat. Take into your hands the cup, for it is the fruit of the vine, and it shall nourish our souls. Take and drink. And let us pray. For the gift of grace we have received here today, we give thanks. For all of the ways that you create possibilities in the midst of the impossible and for the mystery we are called into, we give thanks. We have now been commissioned to feed as we have been fed, to forgive as we have been forgiven, to love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our closing uh, hymn, is from more, uh, more Voices, number 18. Uh, God, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Uh, we will sing through this three times and uh, let us uh, have the Moksulis family take us all home. That's okay. Over to you. God prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. God prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. God prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. And the uh, 
final commission. So friends, let us all be changed by the way of water because by way of water, we are charged with the duty to proclaim God's love. So let us find our way through for the fruitful darkness is all around us in bloom. God loves you, God keeps you, God's face is forever shining upon you. And it is for this reason that the peace of Christ is with us all. Go in God, go in peace. Amen. Fellowship together.